Hi, this is Seth Law with another episode of SetCasts. This is part one of a series exploring the intentionally vulnerable Swift.env application in Xcode. In this episode, we will download, install, and run Swift.env. We will then review instances of insecure data storage and unintended data leakage that are present in the app. To download Xcode, log in to developer.apple.com and browse to iOS apps. Once you have Xcode installed, go to GitHub and retrieve swift.env and follow the instructions from the included readme file to set up a working environment. The package source can be cloned from the current branch by clicking the download zip button on the GitHub project page. If you have an older Xcode beta, pull the relevant code branch from the releases page. To use swift.env, the backend web service must be running. From a command prompt, change into the API directory in the swift.env folder. Now start the web service by running the command ruby space api.rb, as shown. This process must remain running as long as swift.env is being used. To ensure that the service is running properly, access the tutorials page by opening a browser to localhost port 4567 slash tutorial. You should see the swift.nv tutorial walkthroughs. Now that you have a functioning environment, the first mobile security vulnerability we want to look at is the insecure storage of sensitive information. For mobile apps, this includes everything from passwords to credit card details and session credentials. Apple provides a number of different mechanisms for storing data on the mobile device, including preferences like NS user defaults, app databases such as core data, and the keychain. As with Objective-C, Swift still allows the common mistake of storing usernames in an unprotected manner using NS user defaults as well as managed object context for core data functionality. Just because Apple provides the functionality does not mean that it is safe from all attacks. Swift.nv makes the common mistake of storing usernames in an unprotected manner using NS user defaults. Review of the Go function in the NV init view controller class shows the retrieval of insecure data from the preferences used to make a security decision as to which screen should be displayed to a user. In this case, existence of the user's email address within the preference file tells the app to send the user to the init home screen, bypassing any sort of login. Now let's go ahead and exploit this flaw. First, run the app in the simulator. I'm using the iPhone 4 simulator to make it easier to view. Log in with an existing account, maybe something that you've already preloaded some secrets in there with. I'm using test at test.com since you'd never want to store real data in this version of the app. Now log back out of the application by clicking settings and log out. Now we just have to find the relevant user controlled preference file to manipulate the application flow. For the iOS simulators, this is accomplished by finding the plist files associated with the app. For Xcode 6, any data files are located in your home folder under Library, Developer, Core Simulator, Devices. This device folder contains different device ID directories that look like a random string. Each string corresponds to a different device type, such as iPhone 5 or iPad 2. Xcode has the string in the parentheses after the device type used to build your application. Application preferences are found in the Data Library Preferences folder inside this directory. For swift.nv, this is the comenvisiumswift nv plist file. Apple provides a handy plutil command line tool to manipulate these preferences files. Print out the stored preferences by running plutil minus p and the name of the plist file. You can see that we are not logged in and there is no email address in the current preferences. Let's insert back in the expected values using the plutil tool. First, set the logged in preferences to true by running plutil dash replace logged in minus bool for boolean, true, and then the name of the plist file. 
as shown the value has been updated. Now we will use a similar command to update the email preference in the same file. The email preference is a string instead of a boolean and we know that test.test.com already exists as a valid user of the app. The final stage in testing our exploit of insecure data storage is to open swift.nv in the simulator and to see if we are required to enter a password. Let's run the simulator one more time and success. There was no required password for us to actually see the data associated with the test at test.com account. And as you can see, we can look at all of the passwords and all the secrets that have been stored within swift.nv for test at test.com. This is only one instance of insecure data storage in the swift.nv application. There are more, but those are for you to discover. The next mobile app security vulnerability we will review during this tutorial is the unintended exposure of application data to other parts of the mobile device. Mobile application platforms often contain internal processes that store and retrieve data to help them with user interaction. iOS in particular contains multiple documented processes that can expose sensitive information through unintended channels. In particular, iOS screenshots applications when the home button is pressed. This screenshot is stored within the application cache and used as a splash screen when the user reopens the application. Swift iOS applications use a very similar structure to the old Objective-C way of doing things. If a developer is unlikely to use the application did enter background function to restrict iOS stored data in the first place, the same goes for Swift. The name of the backup image is even the same as previous versions of iOS. The Swift NV application falls prey to this problem by ignoring operating system functions. The application did enter background function in appdelegate.swift only forces any preferences to disk so that it doesn't lose data. If the application is closed during secret entry, as shown in the edit view item controller, it is possible for an attacker with physical access to the device to retrieve a screenshot of this activity. To test the exploit of this vulnerability, we will launch the swift.nv application and edit a secret that already exists. Make sure to unmask the current secret value by selecting the box where the value is located. Once the secret is shown, press Command Shift H to return to the home screen within the simulator. The only task left is to find out where iOS is storing the application screenshot and access the image using other means. For this, we return to the command line and do a search for uistar.png in the simulator device directory. Now all that's left is to open up the UI application automatic snapshot default portrait.png and see what we have. The secret that swift.nv was supposed to protect is now available for backup by iOS and iTunes without any app protections. Thanks for watching part one of the swift.nv tutorials. In this tutorial, we covered insecure data storage and unintended data leakage. This has been Seth Law for another episode of SecCasts.